And here we are seated with uh, Henry Hill in his favorite setting, a bar, right? <laughs> Uh, not a prison bar. Not uh, a prison bar. A bar, bar. A bar. A drinking bar. A healthy place to be in. So, Henry, how did this uh, old concept of the Lufthansa robbery, who originated it, how did it come to you? I got out of the can in 79. I the can. It was, but uh, now, I, actually, from Allenwood. And uh, the first weekend I was home, uh, I had dinner uh, Sunday afternoon at Martin Proven's up. Uh, Morty uh, in the movie. And, Marty uh, Krugman. Marty Krugman. That was his you know, as well. That's his uh, And uh, he was all excited and, you know, uh, fucking hyped up, you know. And, uh, and I told him, you know, uh, I'm over at his house with my family and I just got home from the joint after doing ten fucking years. Ten years. You know what I mean? And, uh, to me, I got the score of a lifetime. I mean, you know, everybody has got a score of a lifetime, which, you know, it's a couple of billion dollars. He had no fucking clue what was even there at the Lufthansa. And he runs down the story. I got this book, this bookmaker owes me, uh, I mean, uh, he was the bookmaker. He said, this fucking customer of mine owes me 47000 and blah, blah, blah. I've been giving him credit because I knew the guy was a foreman at uh, Lufthansa Airlines, you know. Is and his, na his name was? His name was Grunwald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are Germans? Whatever. Fuck he was the employee of uh, um, yeah. Lufthansa. Uh, his full name, I believe, uh, is or was Peter Grunwald. Yeah, something. Right. He's like, I got these two guys, you know, blah, blah, blah. They know all uh, the combinations of, uh, you know, they, they had to go through like three safe rooms to get to the fucking safe. And the storage rooms where the yeah, yeah. money was held. And, uh, you know, he laid it, you know, basically laid it out for me. He said, you think you can handle it? <laughs> you know, I look down. Of course, I'm going to be in a fucking airline now. You know, and I, I, I got no love for the fucking Germans anyway. You know, I'm married to uh, uh, one of the tribes, you know. I see, wife. right, right. So, uh, so, uh, so I, I, I said, listen, I said, Jimmy's going to come home. Jimmy was due out in about a, uh, about six or eight weeks after I was home. Jimmy being Jimmy Burke. Jimmy Burke. Yeah. Jim, Jimmy the Gent Burke. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy the Gent, as he was known. Yeah. And uh, as I get Marty calm the fuck down, you know, blah blah blah. He was having dinner, you know, his, his wife cooked a wonderful meal, friend. And uh, so you know, I, I I noodled it for you know for a couple of days, you know. Uh, and I put it on the shelf, you know, I think I went for Jimmy. I couldn't handle it myself. I didn't want to handle it myself. It was, I knew, you know, robbing an airline, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, we made major scores here, France, uh, right, you had done Italia, in the right. yeah, hold on. I, uh, yeah, a couple I, million dollars from Air France, I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so it was nothing you know, it was, No, 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 it was, no, it was, it was a day's pay. You know, and I know what it entailed. It entailed a lot of, uh, yeah, well, uh, observation, research, and, uh, you know. Surveillance. Well, I mean, we never got pinched for any school we ever did. I mean, I never went to prison for any, any, anybody I robbed. And I never robbed anybody, you know, if it was an insurance company, if they weren't insured by Lloyds of London, I didn't fuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It's true. Yeah, you know, we didn't, we didn't steal from a little guy. And we, you know, to me, it made no sense of making the little score. Of course. If you can't rob anything big, don't well, bother. Or you can do the same amount of fucking Precisely. time. Precisely. The know? punishment is the same. It's the same, you know. So, uh, yeah, so it looked good, you know, from the outside, you know. And then, you know, it took a lot of, uh, it took a lot of plan. What would Jimmy come home? And Jimmy didn't like Marty that much, you know. So uh, he was how, a little. How long after uh, Marty brought this to your attention did, well, Jimmy, did come Jimmy come home? About out? eight. What? How long after you knew of of of, uh, of this did, did Jimmy finally come home? About six to eight weeks after. So, oh, I, I, it, I it was a short period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't years. Uh, it, was, it was a month, two, a month and a half, two months. And when Jimmy come home, uh, yeah, we, we had a whole lot of other shit to discuss. Of course. Yeah, we bought the way for six years. You know? A lot of catching so, up to do. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, when I laid it out to Jimmy, Jimmy didn't want to deal with Marty. You know, 
He said, no, nah, I ain't done with that. Hebrew. He didn't say Hebrew. He was, he was in a kind of a <laughs> anti-Semitic anti term. Anti-Semitic, right. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, Jimmy, uh, you know, he, uh, he had a lot of experience in that. <laughs> and he loved the idea. Well, I mean, anything to do with, uh, with you know, JFK. <laughs> with stealing, right, of course. <laughs> Jimmy, that was a special thing. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, so uh, I laid it out to Jimmy, you know, and uh, he said, I don't, you know, I don't have money to talk to me and blah, 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 you know. You, you know, you're the guy, and, you know, he said, I'll put it together. But we had so many other things going on and catching up to do, you know. If it's, if it, if it's doing six fucking and six and a half years, sure. you know, yeah, 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 we had a lot, a lot of on things going yeah. on and a lot of shit. A lot of ideas. But this, you know, this, this was a good deal. And, uh, you know, then Jimmy got real interested in it. You know, and, uh, and we put the plan in action, which, you know, it takes a lot of work to do a, a, of of a major school, you know what I mean? If you don't do it, like, like I said, we never got paid for any scores we ever did. So you, you had got, a great track yeah. record. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. You know, and, uh, and, you know, from there, uh, you know, it was just the planning of it and, uh, you know, the yada, 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 which, you know, putting the crew together that was going to go in and who was going to do it and how we were going to do you it. Were, you were casting the characters. Correct. You, see, you began by casting all the characters. It was just like any other, uh, you, you know, uh, Corporation going to a new uh, endeavor, you know what I mean? It's business. Business is business. Now, Peter Grunewald, the employee who, who worked for Lufthansa, uh, who actually conceived this whole scheme. He didn't conceive it. It was a matter of life and death for the guy. He was a degenerate gambler. He owed Marty 40-something thousand. Marty Krugman, who was a bookmaker. Yeah, he, I had turned my bookmaking business over to him when I went away. You know, and Marty was a genius. And... Uh, you know, he's seen the potential. So Peter Grunewald, in order to disobligate himself. And there was another guy partners with Peter at the time. And, uh, yes, the uh, Lewis Warner. Yeah, Lou, Lou Warner, yeah. Lewis Warner was yeah, the Lou Peter's Warner. partner in this scheme. And I didn't want to meet none of them, you know what I mean? I said, Marty, did, did you ever get to meet to Peter or Warner, or you never did? No, I didn't. Uh, okay. yeah, well, you know, uh, you know, uh, we put the cushion between us. Good between strategy. Marty. Good Marty. strategy. Well, that's the way you do it. So Peter, Peter Grunewald went to Marty Krugman with this concept in order to disobligate himself up, 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 for all the debts that he owed Marty Krugman. Correct. Marty, I guess, was putting pressure on him. Yeah, yeah. And he probably had other pressures coming in from oh, other yeah. angles and other sides. He had a mistress he was supporting. He I had did, a, yeah, yeah. A, a, a narcotic addiction as well. So he was doing all of this on $15,000 a year salary. Fifteen thousand is what he was earning at that time. Yeah, it was a bit more than a week. Precisely. So I don't know how Marty let him go. You know, but Marty knew what the hell. He did. I think they had made some minor scores. You know, M Marty probably did let him go in the hope that uh, Peter Grunewald would eventually lead him to a large score. Right. And well, he was making, you know, little shitty exactly, scores right. and a couple hundred thousand. Years. So what happened uh, subsequently? You know, what, what happened after Jimmy uh, Burke got interested in, in, in the project? You started to cast the characters and then what? Well, the, the planning, you know, it's just like any other, you know, business endeavor you go into. Uh, you know, we start watching a place uh, when, the, you know, when the... Uh, you know, when Briggs picked up the money, we knew that there was a lot of money coming from overseas, especially Germany. We had a lot of American troops. It was all the money that was the American dollar spent, you know, in Europe or in Germany. And Converted more. into into a European uh, uh, yeah, 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 currency yeah. and then brought back into the right. States here. Uh, and, you know, and Lufthansa was contracted by American Express to bring the to, to bring the money back to the well, states. Brinks, American Express. I, 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 don't I, I, I believe it was American Express. Yeah. So you, you you began the surveillance aspect. Yeah. Of, of anyway, the we start planning the uh, the score. And how did you choose those people that were going to be involved? Was it you who chose them, or no, no, Jimmy, Jimmy put the crew together. So w once you laid this on Jimmy, Jimmy took over. Yeah, Jimmy took over. 100%. You know, which I, you know, I kind of backed away, you know. Jimmy asked me, do I want to go on a score? 
I, you know, I just got out of federal business and doing 10. You know, why do I got to put my, you know, I didn't have to put myself, you know, on a you line. You were cautious. You were being cautious. Well, right. I mean, I didn't want to go back to prison. I, you know, I just come home and, you know, and I didn't want to, uh, you, you know, uh, put my, I didn't have to put myself in front. You know, I could be in the background, you know. Uh, but but you watched the, the operation develop. Of course. You, you were there because naturally you had interest in If getting, Jimmy missed something, I would, you know. In the film Goodfellas, you were portrayed. Uh, as the person who went and duped the guard who had the keys to the money storage room. Was that Frenchy, Well, Frenchy actually uh, it was another inside job, you know. Of course. And uh, you know, we had all the unions at the airport at the time. And, I mean, these guys, uh, they couldn't, you know, uh, we'd go to, you know, if one of them get laid off for fine, we'd go to, you know, our, our union go to arbitration for them. No one ever got fired. They could get caught with the, you know, with the end of the cookie job. They couldn't get fired. They were unprotected, unequivocally well, protected. It was a great union, you know, great unions back in those days. I don't know how it is today. It's been a long time. You know? So the 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 um, plan to um, uh, have the keys duplicated. Oh, that was the talking about their friends. Oh, that was that was a different. Uh, yeah, that was their friends. That was their friends. Yeah. Because that was uh, that that was the uh, the scene that was portrayed in the movie Goodfellas. Yeah, that was it. So that was it, Fred. Nothing to do with Lufthansa. Okay. So moving on with the Lufthansa plan, Jimmy took over, started casting the characters, and of course Tommy Bessamone got involved. Tommy, uh, uh, Angel Seppi. Well, Tommy was a uh, half a wing nut. So uh, I think Jimmy put Angel Seppi, who was uh, his uncle, was a maid guy with the Gambinos. He, you know, it uh, it started to get a little. You know, you know, we always worked with the with the Gambinos. You, you know, as far as the airport, because uh, Gotti always, uh, you know, John Gotti always thought that the airport belonged to him. The airport, I mean, that the you know, the, the airport yeah. belonged to the little cases. Period. Johnny Dio and and the Varios, the Dios and the Varios control the airport and all the labor. I mean, from the from the dishwasher bartenders. Uh, you, you, to the you know cargo handlers, and plus we had the we had a couple of a trucking company. I mean it was a back in those days it was a it was a, I don't want to say like why the Wild West. So it was say, the Wild West. Like the Wild I mean, West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Basically, Wild West at Kennedy Airport. Correct. Yeah, um, and it was on Park or yeah, Queens. When when did um, when did um, uh, Paul Vario? Um, when was he told about this whole plan? Uh, from the inception, you know, we you know we had to put it on back old Paulie. Who brought it to his attention? You or Jimmy? Uh, I, I don't remember. Me and Jimmy, you know. You and, know uh, and, and Paulie, of course, loved the idea. Oh, yeah, Paulie, yeah, of course, he supported us 100. percent He had our backs, you know. I mean, he was a he was a captain of the Lucchese family, you know, uh, which was uh, there was five captains: him, uh, Ribs, Tony Ducks, uh, Salerno. Uh, Dio. Dio. Johnny Dio. Yeah, yeah, Johnny Dio was brother. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it was, uh, it's like any other major corporation, you know. It, it, right, there were, there's a, a yeah, certain hierarchies, yeah, exactly. you know, that to fall into place, one beneath the other. Yeah, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I'm talking about sure. it. Sure. Any, and any corporation, it worked the same way. How much did Paulie Vario ultimately get from you for this? You want to know something? I don't even know. I, I mean, personally, I don't know. Uh, everybody, the way we used to operate, if there was five guys that went in and did the job, and, uh, and they belonged to a family, you know, one of the five families in New York, or there was another family involved, every, guy, every person got an equal share. Even you know, the Grum Walls and uh, you know, and Lewis Warner and Warner, they all got uh, you know. Well, they did up until that point, until Jimmy started whacking them at the end. You know what I mean? To uh, because I mean everybody in the city knew it was us, and every law enforcement agency from uh, the, the, the cops at the airport to the FBI to the, to the, the locals to the Port Authority police. I mean, they, they also a, knew. They also a, knew well, that it was you guys. Yeah, yeah, and Ed McDonald can explain how many law enforcement. I mean, 
they observed us 24-7, every one of us, that, you know, because they knew it was us. We all just come home from the can, you know, me, well, me, Jimmy, Jimmy, from the can, and uh, they knew, you know, that, you know, we had, you know, that was our territory, and we did it. Now, the actual payment of Paul Vario, I guess Jimmy Burke handled it. Yeah, of course. Jimmy Burke handled it, and he did pay him, unlike the well, fact you, that... you want to say, I, honestly, uh, to answer you 100% uh, honestly, I don't know how the money with those guys were divided. I know that there was 11 bodies, 11 guys were killed after... after as, a the as a result of As this. a result of it, yeah, but, uh, you know, all well, nine guys and two wives, you know what I mean? And I guess Jimmy figured for a dollar fifty bullet was cheaper than paying the guy, uh, you know, three hundred, four hundred. Makes, sense. 400, it makes, well, makes economic sense. To you, it makes sense. That day, you know. <laughs> what did you get out of it? I wonder we maybe a hundred large, you know what I mean? Just well, chunk, that, you did pretty well, relatively speaking. I did pretty well, I, you know. I, 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 I mean, relatively I, speaking to the others. Well, I, 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 I'm the only sole survivor. You're I mean, just standing up, right? You know, I'm, a, I'm the, the last dinosaur that uh, yeah, survived, the only one. So getting a hundred thousand well, dollars as opposed to getting a bullet, that's... <laughs> no, that's still doing pretty good. Was a reprieve. <laughs> Was a reprieve, yes. <laughs> um, so... When when it it became close to, to, to the countdown of the date that it, this was actually going to take place, which happened on December 11th of 1978, almost 30, 79, 79 or 78, 79. Se 79. Okay, so 31 years, almost 31 years from uh, 31 years ago. It was our Christmas present. A welcome home, Christmas. <laughs> and how was everybody's, how would you describe everybody's um, uh, emotions, everybody's uh, attitudes on those last final days before the actual, you know, robbery? Well, before the robbery, everything was, you know, real under the radar, low key. After the robbery, everybody went berserk. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, well, as I portrayed in the movie, uh, who went and bought, the, you know, 25, that, you know, for the Gumada uh, wife, who bought the new hat. Yeah, you know, like Jimmy says, don't, you know, don't be flashy. Which, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, every law enforcement agency in the tri-states, you know, including the Interpol and uh, the CIA, I mean, it was, it was it, it's still on this day, it's the largest cash robbery yes, indeed in history. It is. It's still in the Guinness World yes. you know, Book of Records. Yes, indeed it is, it still is. Uh, so, so, in other words, it was a controlled uh, situation where everyone uh, very, very, very well rehearsed what they had to do. Of course. I mean, but, but, but then there were mistakes. Yeah, stacks. You know, he was supposed, first of all, stacks. We left, we probably left three million in cash. I mean, these were bulks of $60,000, you know, which uh, filled up one van, and we, there were supposed to be two vans. Stack screwed up. In the first place, you're supposed to have two vans. There was only one van. I only came up with one van. Yeah. So and a few million dollars, it was actually it was left, left behind. It was left behind. And it, it, you know, they, they claimed it was six million. It was six million in hard cash, another couple of million in, in, in gems, you know, uh, that was shipped.